from an absolute LT Spice beginner's perspective, let's just do a simple RC filter circuit, simulate that, and see how this works, and what LT Spice can do for us, why we want to use it. This can be easier and faster than a breadboard. For example, if I'm on the breadboard with an RC circuit, and I want to know, well, what happens if I just change that to a 1K? On the breadboard, I have to fumble around, and if there's too many parts, maybe it will even knock some leads together and short things out. Otherwise, here, I can just go 1K, re-simulate, see how it changes. If I'm doing AC analysis, 1K resistor, change it to 100K, simulate, and I can easily see what would happen. The filter is going to cut off a lot sooner, so when I run it, this is the default screen I see. I want to create a new schematic, so I can click that. Here's the workspace, and we're not going to go through anything like, here's what all the things do, and here's how it works. Let's just do this. I've got no plan. So we want to do an RC circuit. This gate icon called component will let me go into all of these different components and folders of components like op amps, obviously an NPN transistor, but cap is a non-polarized capacitor. Pull cap is the polarized one. I just had to search for that myself. RES resistor, but let's cancel out for now. There are shortcuts here, so let's just choose resistor. Control R. I want to rotate it and place it like that. Escape to get this off the cursor. Capacitor. Place that there. And R and C are the actual resistance value and capacitance value. So if I right click on the R, I can enter in either, let's say if I want a 10K resistor, I can do 10,000 ohms, or I can abbreviate it with a K for 10K. Right click on the C. I want 100 nano, so I can do 100 N. I could also do U for micro, P for pico, and stuff like that, but it's 100 N. For the resistor, instead of K, if I wanted meg, I could just write MEG. We're going to need a ground symbol somewhere here. So there's one up here on the menu. And at this point, I want to wire this up. I'll zoom out a bit with the scroll wheel. Now to draw wires, I can either use that wire tool, or I can go to the right-click menu, draft, draw wire. So click the start point and click along where I want to bend the wire, connect things up. The output is going to be here. I'll just leave that as is. Now we need an input signal, so I'll escape out of this draw tool, go back to this component menu button, and in the components, if I go down to voltage, we can use that as an AC or a DC source, and we can also do waveforms like pulse and sine and things like that. So I'll bring this in, place it over here. I'm also going to want to ground that, draw the wires. Now if I right-click on the symbol, by default it would just be a simple DC source, and we can add some source resistance if we want to simulate that it's not just an ideal voltage. But I'm going to click Advanced. I want it to be a sine wave because we're going to test this filter. And I'm going to say I want this to be a 5 volt peak to peak signal. So amplitude is the peak. I'll put 2.5 and then it will swing positive and negative 2.5 from its center, which will be 0 volts. The frequency, let's make it 1 kilohertz so I can put 1K. And for now, that's all I will do. The info comes right there. If I want, I can either right-click the symbol and edit again, or I can just click on this text, and if I already know what the numbers mean, I can update those. So at this point, I could start simulating this, and for now, just to show, if I haven't written in any extra simulation commands, if I just try to click this Run button, it will tell me I've got to have a simulation command. So first I want to see just the voltage waveforms, like looking on the oscilloscope. So that's a transient analysis. All I really need to put in is how long do I want this to go from the start time. So I'll say 30M for milliseconds. And it will do this transient response for 30 milliseconds. If I OK that, it adds this transient command here. I can edit that later. And here's what will be the waveform but first I need to tell it what wires I want to simulate. So when I bring the cursor on a trace, it'll put a probe, and I can click, and there's the output waveform. And it's just called voltage of node 2. 
I'm going to label this node to make it more obvious. So if I right click draft label net, I'm going to call that out and just tie it to that net. While I'm there, I'll put another one here and call it in. So I'll just duplicate that, escape out, right click, call it in. Now if I rerun this, it'll update there. Since I changed the name of the net, I guess it wants me to reprobe it. So now it's called V out. It's more intuitive what's going on. And we want to simulate a bunch of time to watch and see that this has time to stabilize. If we only let this run three or two milliseconds, we'd see this weird waveform as it's trying to get to a steady state. So we want to also look at the input. I can click that. And that color I don't like. So we can right click on that voltage label. I'll change it to this cyan. That's a bit easier to read. And now there's too much info here. So I'm going to zoom in somewhere over here where it's steady state. Just click up there and drag it all the way down to the bottom. This will zoom in exactly where I'm highlighting. That's easier to see. So the input, we said we want it to be 5 volt peak to peak. So it does go minus 2.5 to plus 2.5. Now the output is attenuated because this is a filter. And the peak here is also delayed from the input peak because it's a lag network. It adds a time constant, so it takes time for this signal to get through when the capacitor is charging up and so on. So if I now right click on this, 1 kilohertz, let's just make it 100 hertz and rerun the simulation. Now we're not as attenuated because the low pass filter is not cutting it off as much. And because we lowered the frequency, now there's less cycles on the screen. So I may want to change that transient analysis. Let's let it go 50 milliseconds and OK. Run the simulation, get more info on the screen. So it's doing a filtering job. I just rearranged some of this text. So 15 milliseconds, we can see it takes a couple of milliseconds here before things stabilize. Now if I want to see the frequency response of this filter, not just a specific, in this case I just did 10 kilohertz and how the output looks. Instead of a transient analysis for the oscilloscope type time domain view, if I right click this and change it to AC analysis, the type of sweep, we want the logarithmic sweep. We can choose octave or decade for that. I'll choose decade. We'll see how that looks. And the number of points, that's how many sample points it's going to calculate for each decade interval of frequencies. I just always start with 100 points, and if it's too coarse, I want more info, I'll change it. And we're just going to start at 1 hertz and go up to, say, 20 kilohertz, so I can put 20k. And I'll OK that, so it changes from a transient to an AC analysis. There's something we need to do, though. If I right-click on this signal source here, when we're doing the frequency response, it's a small signal AC analysis. So it doesn't use this here, which is our specific frequency and voltage that we're looking on the oscilloscope view for. We need to fill in. It's usually people put one, but you can put whatever you want. For now, though, let's say we forgot, so there's nothing entered. If we try to run the simulation, it will tell us by bringing up this error log, no AC stimulus found set the value of the voltage source to AC1 and make it behave like a signal generator for AC analysis. So that's right here. Open that, set this to 1. Now if I run it, we get our output amplitude over frequency and our phase. For now, I don't care about the phase, so if I go over to this y-axis where the phase is shown in degrees, if I just right-click on the axis, I can say don't plot phase, get it out of the way. So here's our decade interval that we simulated for. So let's say at 10 hertz, a decade above that is 10 times 10 hertz, which is 100. And a decade above that is a kilohertz and so on. That's the usual way that we see these kind of plots. So the reason we want this AC amplitude to be 1 in general, this being a low pass filter, it's going to pass the lowest frequencies unattenuated. So it's going to have 0 dB of gain. It's not going to be attenuated less than 0 or amplified above 0 dB. So with this being a 1 volt signal, 
the dB representation of a voltage is 20 times the log of that voltage. So 20 times the log of 1 volt is 0 dB. And then it's just easy to see later on we end up going negative in the dB, so our filter is clearly attenuating from what the original signal would have been. And when we get to the cutoff frequency, we start rolling off at minus 20 dB per decade. Now if we want to put a cursor on here, we can just click on this voltage out label. There's an info box. We can look at frequency and phase and the gain magnitude, things like that. So once we click on the cursor, we see that number one there. Then we can click and drag this. So if I drag this where magnitude is minus three, the minus three dB point or the filter's cutoff frequency is about 158 hertz. So let's double check for a 10K resistor, 100 nano capacitor. If we go to this RC filter tool, 10K resistor, 100 nano capacitor, calculate. There's our cutoff, 159 hertz, matches our 158 that we just manually scrolled to. So to get this cursor out of the way, close this box here. Well, that's the basics of setting up a little circuit, checking this frequency response type performance. We can look at our oscilloscope style time domain response of the circuits. We can always go add op amps, either specific circuit part number models, or just a universal ideal op amp. We can throw that in, give it a power source, wire it up, and check the output of that. So that's how it works. We're probably going to be using this a lot, so we'll keep doing little demos as time goes on, see what we can really do with this stuff.